Good evening and welcome to the Camden Opera House. I'm Dagny Ernest, box office manager and promotions, and I'm so glad you have joined us for this, our last soundcheck performance of the year. We've been able to offer these one hour low cost shows with a free Facebook live stream thanks to our community partners. Tonight's concert is sponsored by StudioMind.fit, a gym for your mind, and our good friends at 40 Paper Italian Bistro. Soundcheck's also supported by your donations to our Community Arts Fund, which you can donate to on our website, and also we've got some uh, buckets out in the lobby. If you have already donated, thank you so much. We've got some great performances coming up through the end of the year and into 2023. Please visit CamdenOperaHouse.com. We'd love to see you here again soon. And finally, kudos to the rest of the staff, our house manager, our incredible volunteers who make the magic happen just about every weekend. Fire and Grace is the creative collaboration between guitarist William Coulter and violinist Edwin Huizinga, and they'll be uh, offering their CDs by donation out back after their performance. As a duo, they explore the connections among cl classical, folk, contemporary musical traditions from all around the world, which is a lot to fit into an hour, so please welcome Fire and Grace.
Thank you very much. Hello, good evening. What a pleasure it is to be in this beautiful venue, in this beautiful town, in this beautiful state of Maine. We are really happy to be here. We've been having a great time so far. Um, we're going to play a variety of music for you tonight, and we're going to tell you a little bit about each piece uh, uh, as we play it. The first music that you just heard, those were four Irish tunes, and they come from this little sh unknown show that is pretty obscure called River Dance. Um, that uh, we learned those from, and uh, those are composed, of course, by Bill Whalen, the great uh, Bill Whalen composer of that show. Uh, and we're going to carry on. We're going to shift gears quite a bit here, and we're going to go from Ireland over down to the Iberian Peninsula into Spain, into the city of Asturias. Um, when I was 18 years old, growing up in northern New Jersey, yes, I admit freely, I'm from New Jersey, um, my dad took me to... Uh, a concert in uh, Jersey City of a great guitarist named Andre Segovia. Um, I'm sure that's a name that you've heard, and it was a life-changing experience for me as a young musician. Um, and one of the pieces that he played on that concert uh, was a Spanish piece called Asturias, composed by Isaac Albanese. And uh, what I learned later was that piece was written for solo piano, and Segovia was one of the first guitarists to make a solo guitar transcription of what is a very, very challenging piano piece let alone a very, very challenging classical guitar piece. And then I started studying classical guitar and realized that Asturias was one of those mountains that must be attempted to be climbed by all young classical guitar players. Um, so I took my hand at it, and I got maybe up to the base camp, maybe camp one, and um, figured it was a great experience. But I always had in the back of my mind that Asturias would be an amazing duo piece. So we decided to make an arrangement for our last CD um, for the violin and the guitar of the great piece by Isaac Albanus called Asturias.
Thank you all so much. It's, it's such a joy to be here. I was here a couple of years ago for one of my best friend's weddings, and uh, that was my first time in, uh, in Camden, and it was, it was it's just as beautiful, and now I get to play here and, uh, and meet new friends. Uh, it's, it's a magical place that you all live. Um, next, we would love to perform something uh, that I grew up with playing classical violin, uh, I fell in love when I was about nine or ten with The Four Seasons by Vivaldi. Um, I remember listening to it constantly and finally being able to play it a little bit. And normally you would play it with an orchestra, but we've been making all these wonderful arrangements of various different kinds of pieces from the folk world and the classical and Baroque world. And so what we have done today is We've made an arrangement for just violin and guitar where Bill, my dear friend over there, plays all of the orchestra parts on the guitar. <laughs> so he's got first violin, second violin, viola, cello, bass, harpsichord, you name it. And uh, it's a really fun piece to play. It's in three movements. Uh, it's a, and we're, we chose summer because it was just summer. And, uh, and it's, a great, it's a great season to play. Please enjoy.
I have a good friend who once said that tuning in front of an audience is like aircraft maintenance. <laughs> and the reason it's like aircraft maintenance is that it's kind of a pain in the ass, but it's always worth it. <laughs> so last summer, um, Edwin and I were part of a festival in California called the Carmel Bach Festival, which we've played out a few times now. And we put together a program called Pangea. And you know the word Pangea refers to the time in the history of the planet when all the continents were connected as one continent. And we thought that was a cool idea to think about from a musical point of view. So we explored music from different parts of the world. And one part of the world that we had not gotten to before um, that we had always wanted to was music from Persia. Um, and um, we thought, well, who can we talk to to find out about music of Persia? And um, I asked my wife, because she was born in Tehran, and she said, sure, I'll give you some ideas. Um, so we spent some, some great time listening to all kinds of really, really, really beautiful, profoundly beautiful music from that part of the world, and uh, we settled on a couple of things that we put together. One of them is what we're going to play for you now, and this is um, our arrangement of uh, a lament that um, has some Turkish origins, but we've heard it mostly done by, uh, by Persian singers, uh, one in particular um, called Dandarya, a uh, female singer, and just a beautiful, beautiful voice and a beautiful interpretation of this lament. And as we all know, there are things going on in Iran right now that are intense and disturbing and hopefully somewhat joyful at some point. So we'd like to send this melody out to the women of Iran in hopes that they can get the freedom that they so desperately deserve. And the tune is called, um, thank you. The name of the, the melody is Sarzamin Man, which means homeland.
Thank you for listening. Um, we have a, an epic piece that we'd love to play for you now. Um, but I also wanted to mention, uh, we've had a really fun time in Maine. We had a couple of shows this week already in Portland and Brunswick with a, a friend of mine who puts on this great series called the Portland Bach Experience. And we're going to play some Bach next. So that's the reason why we got to play on that uh, series. Um, and uh, tomorrow we're heading to Northampton to play a concert. And then uh, we're off to Jaffrey, uh, New Hampshire. And then we're actually heading to do a day of teaching. Uh, a couple friends of ours teach at Fredonia College in upstate New York. So we're going to go hang out with some students there. So if you know anyone, please let them know. And, uh, and then also, yeah, we've made three albums together so far. Um, and uh, we'd love to share them with you. So please grab one on your way home. We'll have them in the lobby. They're free. If you feel like giving a donation, be, be our guest. But no, no, no need. Um, and I think Bill's going to let you know about this next epic piece. I will. Thank you, Edwin. Um, yeah, so we have one more piece of music for you. And um, I'll tell you a bit about it. Uh, years ago, maybe six or seven years ago, Edwin and I were starting our time together, and we were on the road backstage talking about music and life as we do, and he said to me, hey, Bill, um, do you know about this great music by Bach, the, uh, the solo violin partitas? And I said, yeah, of course, there's that one in D minor that's got that great Chaconne, which is a masterpiece, uh, another one of those mountains that classical guitarists try to climb. Um, and he said, yeah, the Chaconne's great, um, but do you know about, there are four movements that come before that. And I said, yeah, I think maybe I've heard one of those. And he said, well, did you know that Robert Schumann, the famous pianist and composer, 
loved the music of Bach so much that he created piano accompaniments so that he could play along with his friends who were playing the solo violin music of Bach. To that, I said, no, I did not know that. So he reached into his bag and he pulled out a book and he said, here, play this on the guitar. So I said, sure, I'm from Jersey, I can do anything. I opened up the book and there's so much black ink on the page. There's chords and scales and arpeggios and trills and ornaments and tremolo and pedaling signs and dynamics and just all these things that a virtuoso piano player like Schumann can do with 10 fingers on 88 keys of the piano. And I'm here with one little flat pick in this hand and four fingers over here on six strings. I did the math, didn't add up, so I handed the book back to Edwin. I said, thanks very much, but I think you need to find yourself a piano player. Of course, he did not. He came back <laughs> relentlessly and said, no, we really got to try this. So we finally did, and uh, we played a little bit of the, uh, the Saraband, and I thought maybe there was something in this piano accompaniment that I could translate to the guitar. So we ended up arranging the first four movements of that partita for guitar accompaniment and violin. Now, that's kind of provocative in the early music purist world because these are solo violin pieces of Bach and who would dare accompany them on a steel string guitar in a funny tuning with a flat pick after all and I said I would and then I said but let's not stop there why don't we put an Irish tune in between each movement of the Bach <laughs> right genius idea you think so we ended up with eight movements four of Bach and four of Irish music we called it the liquid gold suite it's on our first record and it came out it was so much fun to play for us, and audiences just really enjoyed listening to that combination of Bach and traditional Irish music. We thought, this is cool, why don't we try it again? So for the second one, we picked a, um, the E major violin partita, which has six movements, and we thought, let's take those six movements, make a guitar accompaniment, and then let's put something else in between. What can we do? We decided on American fiddle tunes. So we begin that one with a prelude, and then we segue gracefully into The Devil Went Down to Georgia. <laughs> and we thought, for this, we need another instrument because we want it to be kind of an Americana uh, vibe. So we called our, our friend Ashley, who plays mandolin, and she joined us on that piece and on that record. That was our second record called Partita Americana. So then a few years after that, the pandemic happened, but that didn't slow us down. We decided we we're going to do it again. So Edwin suggested the first cello suite by J.S. Bach. I said, great, but you don't play the cello. And he said, no, we'll just play it in a different key, but I'll play the same notes, but in a different key. I thought, great idea, so we got that. This one, I decided not to look at the music of Schumann, just because I wanted to see what I could do based on my experience with the previous two. Made a guitar accompaniment, and then we decided to insert a traditional or classical melody from Spain in between each movement of the um, cello suite. You with me so far? Okay, so I'm going to tell you what the movements are. There are 12 altogether. You don't have to keep track. There will not be a test, but it's just kind of fun to hear the scope of the overall piece. We'll start with the prelude, which many of you have heard, played by Yo-Yo Ma and other great cellists, uh, car commercials, soap operas. It's a really popular theme. From there, we'll segue directly into a, a great up-tempo dance tune that comes from the Basque region of Spain, a place called Mendio Querra, tune with the same name. From there, we'll go back to Bach for the second movement, which is called the Alamande. After that, we'll segue into a 16th century canción, which is a song from 16th century Spain that we made an instrumental arrangement of. And that song is called Ay Linda Amiga, which means my beautiful friend. From there, we'll go back to Bach for the happy-go-lucky movement called the Courant. After that, we'll go back to Spain and we'll play our arrangement of an arrangement by Manuel de Falla that he made of a traditional flamenco or folk melody that he loved um, called Nana, which he put in a collection called Siete Canciones Populares, which is his way of uh, making these beautiful folk melodies from Spain accessible to classical singers, because he wrote the whole thing out. He notated the vocal line, and he notated a piano part. We arranged ours from that, um, from that set. From there, we'll go back to Bach, and we'll play the Saraband. After that, we will go back to Spain and play perhaps the most iconic of all Spanish melodies called Malagueña. After that, we'll go back to Bach for minuet number one and minuet number two. From there, we'll go back to Galicia and we'll play a lovely uh, up-tempo uh, jig from Galicia, a 6-8 tune called the Muniera, and it's a tune that we got from uh, a group called Miadoro, and that's a lovely jig time 
Galician tune. From that, we'll go back to Bach for the final movement of the Bach, which is called the Jig. So we have these two jig jigs right next to each other in the set. And we couldn't stop there. We needed one more tune to cap it off. So we chose a brand new tune that comes from Galicia from a composer, musician named Anxio Pinto. And it's kind of a, the last tune is kind of a mesmerizing um, folk minimalist kind of new age anthem. Does that sound about right? <laughs> cool. And that tune is called Concro Crew. All of these are in one piece, 12 movements. They go one right into the next. The whole thing takes about two and a half hours, so I hope, <laughs> I hope that's okay with everyone. Just kidding, of course. Um, it's about 30 minutes top to bottom, and it's the last thing we'll play for you tonight. Um, and it's on our latest record called Alma, and the piece is called Sweet Espanol. We hope you have as much fun listening to it, this blending of Bach and folk music as we have playing it. And um, thank you for making us feel so welcome here in your lovely town of Camden. Thank you.
Thank you.